Akira is an animated cyberpunk film directed by Katsuhiro Otomo based on his manga of the same name and released in 1988. What you're seeing is called Animation Akira Layout and Keyframes 1. This is volume 1 of a compilation of layout drawings and keyframes used in the production of Akira, drawn by key animators and the director Otomo himself. This book collects 650 pages of animation drawings from the first one-fourth of the film. What are keyframes and layouts exactly? These are vital drawings in the 2D animation world. If the storyboard is like the skeleton of a film, then the layouts and keyframes are like the muscles. Everything else is built on these essential images. Keyframes are the important storytelling poses of an action. These frames designate the start and end of any major movement. So if a character were to stand up from a sitting position, two key frames would be needed to show this action, one drawing of the character sitting and one drawing of the character standing up. In between these two key poses would be in-between drawings, which are all the frames needed to make the transition from sitting to standing look smooth and lifelike. Key frames have become a term that's used in modern video editing to describe basically the same concept, the starting and stopping point of a transition. Layout drawings are done as soon as the storyboards are ready. Layouts expand on the detail of storyboard drawings by depicting the 3D perspective, tying down the background details, and showing where characters are located in the shot. The layout artist also helps ensure the character's movement is staged well within the context of the background art in order to keep the composition clear and avoid tangents. The layouts, like the storyboards, are purely functional and meant to be used as a reference for the background artists and key animators to work from. It goes without saying, I'm going to mispronounce any Japanese names I say in this video, so please forgive me in advance. While this book doesn't specify who worked on what shot, and if it does, the text is in Japanese, you can still sense the individual effort that went into each frame of this production. It really feels like you're holding the artist's work in your hands, the paper is high quality, and if you didn't know these were reproduction drawings, one could easily be fooled into thinking these were the original drawings. There's a few fully colored reproduction cells in here too. It's fun to see how the individual elements of a shot would have been separately animated on their own layers and placed on the multiplane camera. The Akira manga has got to be one of the most visually intricate graphic novels out there. Otomo studied as an architect, and it shows. The skyscrapers in both the manga and film are nightmarishly imposing in their scale, making the humans feel incredibly insignificant, small, and helpless by comparison. The production budget of Akira allowed for the chaotic world of Neo Tokyo to be fully realized. While the hyper-detailed background art isn't prominently featured in this collection, you get to study individual frames at your own pace and absorb character details you might miss while viewing the fast-paced film. Tokyo Movie Sensha, or TMS for short, was an animation studio known for working on Lupin III as well as Disney properties like DuckTales. TMS was one of the main studios working on Akira. Animators working for TMS had the option to devote their lives to animating this ultra-violent, not suitable for young children anime classic, or draw cute pictures for The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, the other project TMS was working on at the same time as Akira. The predicament was that key animators get paid by the shot or sequence that they complete. Because Akira was an intensely detailed project with a high frame count of over 160,000 cells, this meant animators would make less money per second of animation on Akira than on less labor-intensive projects where shots could be completed in a fraction of the time. Even adding one more line to a character increases the difficulty of the animation. This is partly why old rubber hose cartoon characters only had one thumb and three fingers. Taking out one finger still allowed for the hands to be expressive while greatly reducing the workload. Every little detail adds up when you have to draw it thousands of times. The animators were working under especially brutal conditions in an industry that's already plagued with strict expectations and high working hours. The fact that Akira was completed at all is a testament to the skill passion, and dedication of these artists. This isn't to say that being hired to work on Akira was harmful in any way to these artists' careers. 
On the contrary, the project paved the way for many successful key animators and artists who would go on to have very successful careers. Being able to say you worked for Katsuhiro Otomo on one of the most important and influential animation films of all time would certainly be a competitive advantage for anyone working in the industry. A few of these young and hungry superstar artists include key animator Makiko Futaki, who would be known as a key collaborator on Hayao Miyazaki's films with Studio Ghibli. She was also one of the few female animators working at a time when women were generally expected to be cell painters rather than key animators. She was especially skilled at depicting emotion and facial expressions in characters. Some of her character acting scenes include Mei meeting Totoro in My Neighbor Totoro, Pazu and Shida meeting in Castle in the Sky, as well as the opening scene of Kiki's Delivery Service. Takashi Nakamura, a key animator on Miyazaki's Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, was the character designer and an animation director for Akira. He was responsible for many of the unforgettable moments, such as the scene where Tetsuo hallucinates the monster teddy bear. Yoshi Kigami, who also worked on Grave of the Fireflies, was another of the more than 60 key animators involved in the project. One of the most distinctive aspects of Akira is the special effects work, such as the explosions and meticulously detailed smoke. Shinya Ahira handled many of these smoke effects, moving the smoke around as if it was a character with its own personality. Ahira would go on to work on the Animatrix, Kill Bill, and Studio Ghibli films like Howl's Moving Castle. He animated some of the most detailed scenes with realistic effects work, such as the intense riding shot in The Wind Rises. Koji Morimoto, co-founder and director of Studio 4C, was a key animator on Akira. He's collaborated on other Otomo projects like Neo Tokyo, Memories, and Robot Carnival. His own directorial work has a unique and unusual style, such as displayed in his eccentric short film, Noise Man Sound Insect. While Otomo was directing Akira, he was simultaneously working on the 2,000-page manga version. One of his manga assistants was none other than Satoshi Kon, who would collaborate again with Otomo on more projects, such as Rojin Z and the Memories Anthology. Satoshi Kon was himself an accomplished manga author, but he's best known for directing anime films with Studio Madhouse, such as Perfect Blue, Millennium Actress, Tokyo Godfathers, and Paprika. Kon's work had a detailed and precise visual style that, much like Otomo, ignored conventional anime trends and fan service in favor of more realistic renderings of characters. As you can see, many notable artists who would have vital roles in studios like Madhouse, Studio 4C, and Studio Ghibli benefited greatly from working on Akira, even if it was difficult at the time. As I'm flipping through these pages, I feel a connection to artists from another country who drew these images before I was even born. It almost feels like looking at ancient art or cave paintings. There's something very alien yet familiar about art made by the hands of humans I have no personal connection with. Art dissolves the boundaries of time and place, uniting us through the imagination. Feeling the weight of this stack of drawings and knowing it's only a mere fraction of the work that went into the final film inspires me to keep making things. Watching Akira inspires me to try harder at animation. Even if you find the gritty tone and style of Akira unappealing, there's a certain magnetism for the sheer effort that went into every painstakingly hand-drawn line of the animation. This is a useful resource for animators to study, and it's a great book for anyone interested in holding some of the drawings you'll never see on screen in your own hands. I hope you enjoyed seeing these drawings. Like the video if you liked it, and check out the other animation-related stuff on my channel.